Welcome to my top five coziest war games. Pull up your rocket attack chair and let's warm up by the T-72 fire. Our first turret tossing simulator is going to be Regiments. If you're not familiar with Regiments, it is a real-time tactics war game set on the Fulda Gap, and it takes place in a scenario where the Cold War has gone hot and the Warsaw Pact has opted to invade NATO territory. There are nine campaign missions for you to play through. Two were added later on during development. It has a range of free DLCs, a skirmish mode, um, a Regipedia, and all kinds of fancy units ranging from Belgium to the Warsaw Pact to the United Kingdom and obviously your U.S. forces. So you'll have T-80s fighting M1 Abrams, Heinz shooting at v VTRs, or even M60s. There's four distinct skirmish modes. They all are varied, have dynamic objectives, such as the moving defense point, assault, meeting engagement, and there are a ton, a ton of maps for you to play on, not to mention the day-night cycles, the weather. There's also air support, close air support, um, there's artillery support, different types of, I believe they call them tactics to call in. You get napalm, cluster strikes, hinds, battleships, battleships, um, command regiments, brigades, task forces. So the main foundation of this game is you build up your regiment with specific ta task force. And that means you will always be have different varying gameplay. You can focus more on armored. You can focus more on reconnaissance, artillery, or you can even have uh, helicopter focused mobility. The game is still in development. There's another major DLC eventually on their way, and they're actually moving into a more of a dynamic, not dynamic campaign, but procedurally generated missions, which sound extremely interesting to me. And I bet if you enjoy war gaming, you will enjoy procedurally generated campaigns as well, because not only does it increase replayability, but it also increases like the dynamic and creative um, things you can do in the game. Overall, there are engineers that can be used to breach minefields, barbed wire, there's um, defensive points you can lay down, such as anti-tank guns, anti-air guns, mortars. You can have long-range mortars, short-range mortars, mobile artillery, non-mobile artillery. Um, it's an extremely accessible war game. It's one of my favorites, and I find it to be one of the most coziest because of the amount of T-72 turrets we can blow off and kind of just warm up by the fire. I don't think you're going... You can pick it up on sale. I recommend picking it up on sale. It is quite old not old it's around a year old but you'll have fun check it out play it let me know what you think down in the comments and we are moving on to our next coziest war game so stick around if you're still dying to get your hands on some more cold war action then i have armor brigade for you by far one of my favorite war games 27 years of the cold war air covered seven factions usa soviet union west german east german uk finland and poland Three DLCs, Yugoslavia, Italy, Belgium, France, Czech Republic, and the Netherlands. Armor Brigade has you covered. It has a map editor. It has a scenario editor. It has a thriving modding community. There's a Chechnya map. There's Vietnam maps. There's all kinds of maps and forces for you to mess around with. What is Armor Brigade, though? It is a real-time tactical war game, and it's actually, despite what it looks like, a 3D war game. It simulates combat in a 3d environment so if you were to hit that isometric button it would pull you from this 2d view and you will be in the 3d view and you can see the action unfolding on the battlefield so there is obviously the gradient the level of elevation for you to deal with and there's a lot for you to manage it is a good fun tactical war game often overlooked and is relatively and is usually on sale for around 20 bucks i believe i picked it up twice refunded it once because i didn't really know what was going on but then I went back and I bought it again because that's just the kind of war gamer I am. So far, I've purchased all the DLCs. I've played through most of them. I mostly mess around in the map editor and I cannot recommend it enough. You'll have large maps modeled upon terrain. Obviously, the Fulda Gap realistically modeled. So you import maps and you kind of set up the elevation terrain. They have a, a thing to set up the elevation. Um, it comes with a complete battle editor or a scenario editor. You can create your own forces as a scenario generator, a campaign generator, a single mission generator. Overall, it has basically everything you need if you want to rate, wage war on the Fulda Gap for at least 27 years. There's also like the Fort Irwin Training Center, which is a fun little desert map that you can play on and create some real, real scenarios, some blue on blue contact. Um, dynamic AI, there's morale, training level, ammunition. You can set your standard operating procedures. When your units come under fire, you can immediately have them dismount. Radios, so when you call in artillery strikes or if you need to coordinate commands, there's a 
the in-depth command structure and radio. There's neutral units, wind, speed direction, thunderstorm, lightning strikes to set the valley ablaze. So if you're not warm enough or cozy enough quite yet, the weather will warm you up all on its own. That also means smoke, obscuring your vision. There's wire and anti-tank guided obstacles that you can destroy with engineers and engineering units. Flamethrowers. Remember, this is a cold war or this is a cozy war game list. Night vision. And things can actually be illuminated by fire. So this is a realistic, real-time tactical war game that you can really and truly sink your teeth into. So it's actually one of my favorites. I really enjoy it. I recommend it all the time. Check it out. You will find something to love. Number three on the list is Campaign Series Vietnam. If you're not busy warming yourself by the napalm, then jump right on into this turn-based tactical and operational war game. It is set in the mid-20th century, and it covers conflicts in the Southeast Asia region. All of these scenarios are painstakingly researched. I've played this game quite extensively lately. I love calling in airstrikes, broken arrows on my own unit, just blowing everything up. It has the PLA, it has the NBA, and it has some very, very unique situations all designed and all an absolute joy to play. Now, this hexes are 250 meters, and there are no-go zones. There's helicopters, minefields, hidden minefields, IEDs, unconventional warfare. One of my favorite types of warfare um, is the unconventional kind because it kind of puts you in a real, real, really weird dynamic situation that you need to think a little bit about. You have tanks on the battlefield. You have a full-blown scenario editor. And if you love Lua scripting, then this game is for you as well. Um, it's a very dynamic nature and scripted AI. A completely new experience and challenge when you play against a computer opponent. Or you can actually play against the uh, a real-life opponent. So someone who also enjoys Cozy War games. So you can play play by email or head-to-head -head and hot seat. Um, it's a good introductory war game. It does have some basic um, tutorials. I have never passed one of the basic tutorials, but I also don't read a lot of the descriptions, rules, or tutorial information. I like going in blind, having fun, you know, just entering the jungles of Vietnam and kind of just laying waste to everything with M60s. Obviously, not 249s, flamethrowers, napalm, helicopters, gunships. Overall, it has everything you can desire in a war game. Um, the graphics are interesting. I really, they don't bother me at all. They might bother other people, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, there's trench warfare, trench defenses, armored breakthroughs, battles of attrition, mobile defenses, and search and destroy missions. One of the, my fun missions, I like to create a little special forces missions where you kind of just dive into the situation and kind of uh, approach the scenario in a unique and dynamic manner. It's quite the gem of a war game, often overlooked. Some would say forgotten. But I am not one of those people. There's also Campaign Series Middle East, which is just another form of Campaign Series or another iteration. The AI is much better in Vietnam. Personally, I enjoy Middle East because I enjoy that theater, but actually I've been really enjoying my time with Vietnam. I'm really looking forward to the Hamburger Hill scenario. Who hasn't watched the Hamburger Hill documentaries on the History Channel? Honestly, who hasn't watched documentaries on the History Channel? Raise your hand. And if you are one of those people, leave a like and comment down below and let me know what you are watching. And let's keep it moving. So check out Campaign Series Vietnam. You will like it. I like it. You're watching this channel. That means we both will like it. Welcome to another Hyper Lethal War Game. This one's set in the Cold War, so we're back in the Folder Gap once again. Except this time we're being warmed up by T-72s, T-80s, M1 Abrams, and all kinds of firepower. Level bombers, fighters, strikers, helicopters, recon helicopters, engineers, nuclear bombs, Chemical warfare, both persistent and non-persistent. Lots of radiation, and you're going to have a good time. This is Flashpoint Campaign's Southern Storm. A real a, an asynchronous Wego masterpiece, in my opinion. A gem of a game. I actually really enjoy um, Flashpoint Campaign's Southern Storm. There's 40-plus maps and an amazing editor. One of the best Cold War games out there right now. A simulator like none other. Obviously, it's Hex Encounter based, but it is Wego. It's one of those hyper-lethal war games where one wrong move and you lose a platoon of T-72s, a platoon of M1 Abrams, BTRs, Bradleys, M113s. You have all kinds of forces on the battlefield. NATO, Warsaw Pact, Soviet, I believe the French, uh, Canada. The <laughs> it is such a good game. I, there's not enough good things to be said about this. Honestly, if I were to 
if I were to rate this game, I'd rate it 10 out of 10 for Artillery Death Simulator because that's how I rate my cozy war games. Unfortunately, you will not be getting warmed up by napalm in this game, but the shrapnel from the artillery will definitely heat the insides of you. Your muscles will get cooked. And overall, it is a wonderful game to play. And it's one I play quite extensively on this channel, at least for the last three months. There's not enough that can, not enough good things that can be said about this game. There's infantry fighting vehicles, infantry squads, teams, recon forces, Spetsnaz, rangers. I've modded in ground-launched bombs. There's level bombers that drop cluster munitions. This is the game for you if you want a Cold War simulator. Uh, you need to pick this up. Buy it on sale. I think it's on sale. I don't know if it's on sale, but if it's on sale, you need to buy it. So check out those nuclear weapons. Peace. It's time to hit the beaches. Here's another cozy war game. The final one in this video. Headquarters World War II. Fast-paced, turn-based strategy. I have played this game quite extensively, both in beta, out of beta, tested it, and was sent a marketing copy, obviously. Let's take a look. I really enjoy this game. It's like tabletop. It's like a tabletop board game just thrown on your computer. There's front armor, back armor, side armor, destructible buildings. No more of that setup on your tabletop. You can actually play this game on your computer because it is a computer war game. It has three campaigns, nine operation each. Quick public math, nine, 18, 27 campaigns. Each campaign or each mission does have a turn limit. Obviously, I've never ran into any issues with the turn limit. I mean, some have 40 turns, and then you finish some campaigns or some missions in like seven turns. But it is there, so some people might have a bit of a gripe with that. Personally, I think it's one of the better World War II games. There's other games that can be compared to it. And if you're not cozy enough, there are tanks with flamethrowers, so just stand back and look out for those. Um, there's obviously a morale. There's overrun. It has all your standard stuff, except it's not hex-based. This one opted to go with another geometric shape, which is the square. I know, the square. But um, the destructible buildings are a sight to behold. There's recon units, sniper units. So good, so cool, so visceral. Oh, the devastation is unbelievable. Burning tanks. Remember how we were tossing T-72s earlier? Well, we're going to be tossing those panzers now. Um, beyond that, there's high and low ground mechanics, something, fences, obstacles. One issue that I did run into with this game is I didn't quite enjoy that we couldn't walk across a stream. So I really need to dive into that and figure out why that's kind of an issue. There is a, a line of sight and terrain does affect line of sights. There's on-call mortars, right? On-call recon units. Yeah. Sounding like what you want in a war game, isn't it? This is the game for you. Honestly, I believe it just released today. I got my copy from the developer a, a little bit ago, and I released earlier videos on it. We're probably going to stream it. Follow, like, comment, subscribe, support the channel. We are the list tubers. Um, there's Europe, USA, UK, Germany. We're going to storm bunkers, occupy houses, and win tank duels. Win is questionable but we will participate. The flamethrower units are quite cool. It does lend itself to some historical accuracies, and I know some of the scenarios or at least campaigns are modeled off, or, off of some real events, but remember it is a war game and it is a video game at its heart and soul, so obviously not everything is going to be 100% correct. And if you made it this far, then definitely a lot of the games we cited are based off real events, except for the Cold War Gone Hot games don't get confused unless they were the Middle East or the Iranian-Iraq conflict. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.